was the Chardonnay in the liner. And there was, there was definitely like a... a Chardonnay? Oh fuck, yeah, I, I do think it was Chardonnay. Daddy Shardy! Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Wine for the People. Thank you so much uh, for joining us this lovely week. We've got another six wines to crack into, but first, our question of the week. Tell us about your most favorite dining experience, whether it's a 10-gorse degustation or if it was just, you know, a cheeky bottle of sparkling wine in a polystyrene cup that you had one time at a food court. Uh, I'd really like to know, what was your favorite dining experience? Right before we get into these, big thank you to Sometimes Always for obviously providing all the wines, Lockie for selecting them on the day, the hosts for tasting them and putting our palates through rigmarole uh, that we're about to get into, so let's dive straight into it. Once more with feeling, let's fucking do it. Red wine, brown qualities to it. Still getting that lovely violet ruby tinge throughout the entire thing. There's a great little savory uh, sort of line to this, but we are talking that sort of red fruited spectrum. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It, it, I think it just needs a little bit more going on. It feels like a good, like, you know, kind of entry level, like Natty Pinot kind of thing. Like strawy, sort of like straws in the shit the horses eat, not the ones that turtles shouldn't. I like it. Uh... Interesting. I mean, it's a little bit too on the salty, briny, savory edge for my liking personally, kind of feels like either really, really, really young Nebbiolo from a new world country, or, you know, we're in this sort of weird Merlot territory. And I, like, it's a very, very nice wine, but it just lacks that next level to make it a truly delicious and interesting wine. Wow, cool. Uh, look, there's red fruit in there, but it also is quite clearly alcoholic. Um, pretty cool, pretty fun. Not my personal cup of tea, but as like a quality wine, it's incredibly well made. Uh, I'd be rolling it with around about $32 a bottle and I'd buy three bottles. Unfiltered white wine. It's got that haze to it. Got a little bit of that kind of it's like protein color. Could do a little bit more. Yep, uh, give me some seafood and I'll drink that. Otherwise, uh, keep it to yourself. Wow, cool. Wow, fuck, that's really good, man. I think that's Shannon. That is just remarkably well made. This isn't a wine that sticks out. It's it's a wine that actually kind of keeps his head sort of lowered. It's it's incredibly humbling. Um, like this isn't a, a wine of over expression. It's actually a wine of restraint. Oh, love it. Really love it. It is like this cashew thing, this cashew nut, like creamy thing is just like such a delightful core of the wine. Yeah, I don't like it heaps. It kind of tastes like, you know when the stone fruit of a peach or something like that and you really suck on the start the pip and it has it kind of still tastes like the thing that you wanted it to taste like but ultimately it just kind of tastes like a rock to be a person that's really i think if you're not into wine you're gonna enjoy this wine because you're gonna, it's really yummy if you're really into wine you're gonna enjoy this wine because cerebrally you were like why didn't this winemaker just like you know hit the jets on absolutely everything and make a wine that's bigger than ben hurt because they didn't want to that was that's literally it they simply didn't want to they wanted to show restraint something and that's a really really hard thing to do kind of enjoy over a long period of time i think it's a fucking cracking wine and it's really front running my wine of the lineup so far. On to the second red wine of the lineup, lightly darker. So a lot of power, a lot of weight, potentially a lot of alcohol here. There's a little bit of that volatile acidity, a little bit of ethyl acetate nail polish remover just sitting at the top of the, you know, top of aromatics. Like underripe strawberry, red currants, yeah, fresh cherry kind of thing. But there's nice kind of like, yeah, VA character. I think it smells pretty cool. It, it, it leads me to like ask more questions about the wine itself. Uh, a little bit reductive, smells a bit farty. I wouldn't douse myself in it, um, but hopefully I'll drown myself in it because flavor is what really matters. Tannin. Um, it's probably my least favorite style of red wine where it tastes kind of like grippy, cardboardy farts. Wow, that is a wine. That is a wine and a half. Chewy, savory tannin, kind of like pushing more onto that kind of purple fruit spectrum, like as far as the taste goes. It feels like every glass of house red at every natural wine bar on the planet. This style of wine is just a very normal, natural, crunchy, savory, delicious style of medium bodied red wine, and it's fine. I'm gonna be rolling with around about another 60 bucks a bottle and I'm gonna roll with 12. I think that's all class. Stunning example. <laughs> Number four, turbid orange wine. Brr, absolute fucking like a Zabibo. Fun fact, Golden Circle's uh, Tropical Juice has seven fruits in it and five of them begin with P. Comment down below if you think you know what they are. Quiz last night and that was one of the questions. 
We are this the other week. The guys went so into the orange wine from last week. I, I was, and I'm really big into this. I'm finding, you know, it used to be once upon a time that all the orange wines were kind of shit. This now, like we're seeing, more and more orange wines hit the market that are just absolutely stunning. That's the perfect balance of, of overt fruitiness as well as that, that sort of line and thread of, of lanolin and marmalade and black tea really encapsulated again, coiled and tensioned. Bang, yum, scrumptious. 12, easy. Herbert's from Australia, 40 bucks. Smells like the tropical juice that Sean the Sheep and Co would have made because this was made in a fucking barn. That's absolutely spot on. That is agricultural as hell but it smells fruity and tropical. So good on you, Sean. I'm sure it'll be tasty. That, that sort of line and thread of, of lanolin and marmalade and black tea just really encapsulated again, coiled and tensioned. Fucking remarkable work. $48 a bottle, I'm gonna roll with 12. I'm buying a lot of wine in this lineup. Five and Lachlan, is this water? I'm actually quite parched. Very clear. There's bugger all colors to that at all. So I'm thinking that this is gonna be like a salty, mineralistic Riesling or something along those lines, let's see. A bit low acidity, to be honest. Could be Aligote. Could be Aligote. You know what, fuck it. I'm gonna hit the Aligote bar. Chill this down and absolutely go for it. This is a cool wine. Six bottles, not enough, not quite as not enough sugar to be from Germany. Um, I reckon it's Aussie. Mm, yeah, off dry Riesling. Off dry Riesling. These wines I always want to drink colder than what we're drinking them in here because we don't, full bars, we don't refrigerate these wines as much as we could, but yeah, it smells kind of like fruit salad. It's a little bit sweet. You should definitely drink it, consume it. Uh, probably not north of like 40 bucks a bottle though. So I'm gonna be rolling with around about $36 a bottle and I'm going to want six bottles. I think it's a really tasty wine. I would drink a lot of it. Don't want to pack out my cellar with bottles of this. I want to pack out my cellar with more interesting bottles. I think that's the point. Wine number six. Gold, hazy, kind of cool. Woody, buttery, balanced. A good Chardonnay is like a good sports team. So if you look at an AFL side that's got a really tall dominant forward line, but a shit midfield that can't get the ball up to them, that's gonna be useless. In the same sense, if you've got a Chardonnay that's super buttery, but there's no oak to balance that out and there's no fruit flavor and no acid. Like, what the fuck's the point? What you need is a team working perfect harmony. What this wine is doing, where it's got the oak, it's got the butteriness, it's got the fruit flavor, it's got a little bit of acidity. Bang on, great job, winemaker. Really like this. A lot going on here. I get the sense of a fair amount of alcohol. I also get like a quite a bulbous richness and I think the batonage is meant to really oak. This is like, it's a big wine. It's actually a big wine without having any oak, which is very impressive. This is something you want. I want it with like a really kind of crispy skin chicken but not like fried you know like pan fried like cr pan fried crispy skin chicken with like more like a moroccan style bang on great job winemaker really like this I'm, I'm still not gonna buy 12 because it's chardonnay and no i tell a lie that's 12 no, that's really good i would drink the hell out of that cool 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 wine um would probably spend around about uh 35 a bottle for it and i'd want three bottles that's where the other guys in all right we're back. We've we got are. six wines. It looks like a traffic light this, um, it does. this week. It's all over the shop. It is all over the shop, but I had a lot of fun. I don't, I fun. I don't, I don't stop this much. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys think? Loved it. Yeah. Fucking loved it. I was yeah. so into this lineup. I, I was too. It was a bit, there was banger after banger. After I bought bugger all wine this week. I was wow. right, okay. anti a lot of okay, these. I have to say, actually, actually, yeah, that makes sense. There's some quiet wines that are like, you really got to spend some time with them to be able to really get them. I think there's some really loudly don't buy me wines. Here, all, right, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> there's one that I was there's, that Let's noise. start with wine number one. What are we doing? What are we talking about? Cool. Uh, yeah, Pinot-y, like, I reckon it's like entry-level Pinot kind of thing. It's got savoury characters, it's got juiciness. I, I quite liked it. I just didn't, it was... I thought know. it was something Italian. Uh, mm. was my sort of vibe from it. Had okay. a little bit of, I don't know, there's like this thing that I struggle to put my finger on, but I'm just like, it feels like they wear overalls and sometimes six plumbing. Like, I don't know what it is about it, but... <laughs> Basically Mario. Um, well done, this, you got that. <laughs> I was I was at thirty two bucks and I wanted three. I was at forty two and three. Oh, that's okay. it's we're all, we're all about it. We're all really very is all of you. Good shout. Trotter, I think this is how fucking how sick. That's is really sick. That's label. a really carbonic cool shiraz. There you go. There you go. Oh, you well done. That. Bendigo. Bendigo. Yeah, Bendigo. Yeah, Bendigo. There we go. Victoria. Yeah, cool. that's that's. I mean, great. I mean, what was it twenty nine bucks? Yes, yeah, a very good value. Like. This is what you want on at like a natural wine bar or a, just a just a bar. You mm. go to a bar on like a 
Wednesday night, you've had a rubbish day at work and like, you know, there's a couple of people there. I was like, let's go get a glass of wine. Like, Fuck it, great. Go down to that bar and you was like, can I just get a glass of red, thanks? This is the glass of red that you want. Call me old fashioned. Okay, I will. But I just want to see it in like two years time. You're I just want to fucking see old fashioned. Just, yeah, I know, just a bit more bottle age. The, oh, the, the label goes up there with probably some of the best packaging, like best Dude, label in Australia. How yeah. fucking I good love is that? that? Sexy stuff. That yeah. is so. In the much waiters, fun. I'm yeah. still patting myself on the back. That is so just black old tapping hard. That flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, well done. Yeah, honestly, you triggered oh. that kind of like identification, which there. is so rare <laughs> to have come this way. It's usually you <laughs> saying, <laughs> "Yeah, no, we All right, what do you one know number two, we jump from red to white. Oh my fucking god, man, mm. this is so good. It's on point. It's on point. Uh, I want a 12. I'm happy to pay about 55 bucks for that. I want a 12 and happy to pay 60. Uh, 48 for three. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got? All right, this is oh, entropy that's wines. Label. That's entropy yeah. wines, and this is Savignon. Savignon. There you go. He called it. Bang. He called it. Oxidative and complex. Salted nuts. Oxidative. Dura oh, vibe. Really? Yeah. So we had this uh, his Pinot the other and week. I wasn't a fan. I we wasn't know, a fan. But that's this is another level. You really liked it, but you hated the, the price. price. This is the inverse of that. This is like, this is a wine you could really command 60 bucks or 65 bucks for what the Pinot was, but this is 45. Bro, swap your pricing around. Don't just charge Pinot because you can. This is fucking epic. This is amazing. That's, this that's is next level. That's justifiable of like yeah. Young Gun of Wine winner. That's a fucking brilliant one. 14% as well. That's some high ABV yeah. white. Yeah, yeah, so it's all, so it's trying to um, get uh, the right pH range so you can have a floor, layer of floor yeast. So he's let it ripen on the vine longer. So there's this layer of yeast that protects it from oxygen, but also lets it interact with oxygen, which all that nutty flavor kind of gets there. Cool, so just unlocking a little bit more wine knowledge. So the longer you leave it to ripen, the more sugar it's gonna be, so the higher ABV you can make the wine. Yes, correct. Yes, correct. Ooh, yes. Cool. Well done. Yeah, well, well done. That's exactly well right. Done. Started a bit of trend here for me because we've got a couple of ones that I really enjoyed, particularly <laughs> this one. <laughs> Wow, this is my least favorite wine of the lineup. Same. Yeah, this yeah. sucked. Nah, I was a big fan. Look, this is a very middle of the road wine, which is kind of what you've exactly said. It reflects in what I thought about it. Was this is every house medium weight red you get at every natural wine bar yeah. in the fucking world. It's a Loire Rosso. It's like some mm. kind of Loire like Cabernet Franc thing. I don't like how it tastes. <laughs> Enough said. I do not like the flavor of that one. All right, well, let's see where we stand. I'm at 60 bucks and I want 12. Uh, two for 47. One for 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Let's do it. Uh, Menthea. That's a Menthea. Menthea. That's there really cool. Yeah, really, really cool. 26 bucks imported by our good friends at Mezzanine. Um, pretty cool label. I actually, I really love the connection between the... Like yeah, the, yeah, that, the thing in that, that, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's nice. um, 26, for twenty six dollars, that is great value. Yeah, yeah, I'll oh. definitely say that. No, that's not. <laughs> and uh, Menthea, uh, sick variety. More of it in Australia, please. Also, kind of funny to say I like Menthea. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like a mistake. I like a, I like a Menthea. Sounds like you're trying to say Menthea. <laughs> Banger again. Fuck, Fuck, yeah. Fuck, Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Fuck this is so... <laughs> <laughs> what? It was so good. It was everything that I want out of an orange wine and more. It was fantastic. <laughs> Come on, Henry. Why'd you hate it? Fuck yeah, it's so good. Uh, look, I don't want to be oversimplistic about it, but again, it's the taste of it that I really like. <laughs> Today, I'm spending $48 a bottle for it and I want to buy 12. I'm going to spend $40 and I want to buy 12. I want to spend 35 and I'll have one. <laughs> hey. It's in the price on rack. It. On it. Slot. Dude. Oh, it's just oh, so God. sick! That's so good! It's so, so, so fucking sick! Oh, that's so cool. God, I feel like uh, I've just called a puppy ugly. <laughs> uh, 30 day skin contact semi-on musket and Riesling from our good friend a, David Guy. Is that a 500ml yeah. bottle? It is. It is a 500 ml bottle. Um, yeah. Because it's perfect to just do this. Yeah, it would be. It is it is exactly what It is, like. it's perfect. I'd like it with lemonade. I feel like it's swashbuckling. I, I feel there's a bit of a swashbuckling vibe, uh, vibe to this. So oh, this is- Pirates uh, aren't drinking this So shit. if you guys have had Yeti and the Coconut, this is the Yeti out of Yeti and the Coconut. We've had his wines on the show before, as his other half. Fuck yeah, that's, that's really fun. Cool. Love the bottle. Everything. I'm gonna actually take the hummus. I love so cool. everything oh, about yeah, that. It's really fun. Except what's inside it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, wine number so five. We're picking uh, up. I hit the button on this one. I, Aligote. I, I put the Aligote button on this. Get I thought, out. why not? Hey. I already owe ten bucks. It's gonna be fifteen. Total of twenty in the pot. If I'm wrong. 
If I'm wrong, it'll be up to 15. True, true, true. If You're I'm wrong. right, I'll be five bucks up. You're absolutely right. Um, uh, $30 for six bottles. Uh, 50 bucks for six for me. 36 and six. Hey. Stoke. Stoke. Uh, uh, Seven block. block. What the fuck? Yeah, right. That's awesome. And it's from Kangaroo Island. Oh, this is our, uh, so this is Nick and Rebecca. Nick and Rebecca. Yeah, yeah. Lovely people. And uh, the biggest flag wavers for Kangaroo Island wine there are, there are absolutely are. That is the cleanest, prettiest, most fun Sauvignon Blanc I've had in a hot. It's minute. almost like having a tasteless Sauvignon Blanc makes it a better Sauvignon Blanc in Australia. I guess. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with. That. <laughs> <laughs> These guys know what they're doing. They make some absolutely incredible wine. Yeah, that bops. And um, the new labeling for their whole brand is just yeah, I love it. Really I, I wanted to make labels like this. They're pretty sick. God damn it! Well done. Uh, and finally, to finish us off. This was the Chardonnay in the lineup. And there was there was definitely like a, a Chardonnay. Oh fuck yeah! I, I do think it's Chardonnay. There was a. Uh, it could be. It definitely could be. But it was. I couldn't pick what it was because it's definitely like oxidative. Mm -hmm. It's been picked later. It's lower in acidity. It has everything to lead me down that uh, Sauvignon or Shannon path, but without the acidity. So Chardonnay yeah. is actually not a bad shout. The, like, this is one of the wines that I picked up, smelled, and instantly wrote down Chardonnay because it's mm. that sort of. I think what I might be doing is confusing the slightly sort of pungent, farty thing mm. with oak. And then mm. as soon as I start confusing those things, I'm like, oh, oak, Chardonnay, bang, that's what it's okay. going to be. I'm, yeah. I'm happy with my Chardonnay guess on that, I'm sticking with it. I yeah. got a dozen of it. Oh, wow. Okay, I was going for three, 35 bucks. I went a dozen too, I went 70. Wow, you guys loved it. Uh, I said 40. Mm. Sure. Oh, that is. Dude. Ah, Puff Daddy Chardonnay! Oh, Daddy Chardonnay! Oh, Daddy Chardonnay! Dude! So the thing about oak. Oh, oh, the thing about oak. <laughs> that is amazing. Huge. That's amazing. Fuck yeah, dude. That is the best call you have actually, actually made, made today. Yeah. That yeah. is epic. Easily. Which is fun. Like, I do actually enjoy making calls like that as opposed to like early on where I had no idea, so I said a great variety that I've heard of before. Whereas this time it is actually like. Educated that guess. That smells like Chardonnay. That's an educated guess. That is fucking brilliant. I would um, never pick Chardonnay. So I said, so, I, so I had root, like region and like variety, yeah. right? But I'd he, like, like to thank the, my mum exact... for having me. I'd like to thank Brendan <laughs> and Noah for bringing me on this wine journey together. <laughs> Lockie as well for filming all of the history history of this, but ultimately, <laughs> I'd like to thank myself for believing in me. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to back- oh. Yeah, I'd like to- <laughs> I would like to back myself in constantly to make bad calls. And then one day- I can't believe I was wrong about Alagote and he was right about Chardonnay. Oh my same god! <laughs> uh, we can check it off, we will be here next week. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what?